Good evening, everyone. It's about that time. I'm going to wait as I grab my watch, uh, even though there's a clock behind me. But I don't like to look behind. I press forward toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Press toward the, the prize. Thank you, for those of you that are going to join, and I pray that you have your Bibles and pen and paper. And as I pray, Father God, is again I come to you in the name of Jesus, thanking you, Lord, for this privilege. Asking first of all, God, that you forgive me for all my sins, anything, God, that is contrary to your will, your way, your word. Father, remove it from me that I may be upright and can come boldly before the throne of grace and make my petitions known. I ask your blessings upon those that are going to listen tonight that they will have ears to hear and will take this further and study to show themselves approved unto you work men, men and women that won't be ashamed rightly dividing this word of truth and we never want to lean to our own understanding father i've prayed for many many people and still praying this there's a lot on my plate right now, God, and I am waiting on the answer for you to deliver in the midst. Father, I'm thankful for those mothers that may be listening and and those fathers that uh, they haven't lost their mothers. They, they know where they are, but, but, but encourage them in Jesus' name. Take me out of self. Always, Lord, out of myself, hide me behind the, the cross of Calvary. Hide me behind your blood and let no flesh be on parade. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be accepted in your sight. Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen and amen. Hey. It's a family affair again. I see Sister Nadine, Barbara, my, my niece, and you still my baby, Kimberly. You still my baby. Where you been? Where you been, Miss Taylor? Where you been? It's good to see you. Good to see you. I'm just, just playing. Those that know me know that I like to have fun. If you, if you want somebody that is starts calling you're looking at the wrong person because laugh, I love to laugh and even God laughs he, he laughs at some of the stupid stuff we do he, the Bible declares that we have them in <laughs> in derision at, at times but but be happy God came that we might have life and have it more abundantly which requires laughter laughter I love to laugh but and had not had been called into this ministry, I might might have been on a stage somewhere. Cause if, even at Virginia State, I was me and a frat friend of mine. <laughs> we'll call him. We'll we'll call him Roy. You know, we we perform on the stage. We we cut up, but but that that's few and in between, but. Good evening, uh, good evening, Sister Loretta. Boy. I am so glad to see y'all. Y'all been so faithful. And there are many that that even though they don't put their names on the screen, that they're I found they are watching us. And so, God's work, His word does not come back to me void. So, uh, so I'm thankful for those of you that have reached out and and, and made disciples and bring 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 them to the shepherd to feed. You, sheep have sheep, shepherds feed sheep. Now, we're talking about the holy days. The holy days, not holidays. Holidays is of the world. Hey, Roy. <laughs> holidays is of the world. 
Miss Savannah, can can you pl please make him behave? You know who I'm talking about. But anyway, we don't forget holidays, but we have neglected the holy days. And before I go back into detail concerning the feast, turn with me to uh, to Hebrews nine, because. I want you to understand something. We're not going to be killing lambs and all kind of stuff. We're, that's been done. The lamb, the lamb was slain from the foundation of the earth in Jesus Christ. So we, because some, <laughs> some of y'all know you ain't gonna kill nothing. You know you ain't gonna kill nothing. Squeamish, blood, <laughs> but. Let me explain something from uh, Hebrews chapter 9 before we start dealing with, with the feast, all right? Hebrews is right before James, right after Philemon, that y'all call Philemon. But the ninth chapter... Hebrews 9 and let's start with let's let's start with uh, verse 7 talking about when the second one that the high priest alone went every year not without blood which he offered for himself which he, off, he, he went with blood that he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. You see that in, ver, in verse 7? It says, The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tab tabernacle was standing. We're talking about under the law. Which was a figure for the time then presence, present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. It, 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 didn't, it didn't make him perfect. But what, why, were, why were all these things done in the Old Testament? Verse 10 answers it, which stood only, which stood only in meats, and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation until the time of reformation in other words till Christ came it was reformed reformation came so how do I explain this how do I explain this Paul is saying that the sacrifices the animal sacrifices and the washings and the other rituals were only given as a schoolmaster for a limited time. It was a schoolmaster. They were concerned only with foods and drinks and various washings and fleshly ordinances until Hebrews 9 10, the time of Reformation. So during that time, there were sacrifices for almost every day of the week until Christ came. You said, well, you're saying that we're supposed to <laughs> obey the feasts, o obey, obey the, obey the, uh, the uh, seven weeks, the things done within the seven weeks. Well, let's go to, let's go, go to a he, uh, Leviticus 23, where, where I've told y'all to study. And I'm just going to read one verse because we're we're going to be dealing from uh, verse six all the way all the way through uh, 21. But in verse 21, we are to proclaim. 
we're going to talk about the Holy Convocation among, among the other feasts. Do no work, Diane. It shall be at the very bottom, it shall be a statute or a law forever. Forever in your gener in in your dwellings, in your house. It's, this is not happening in the church. It's in your house. It's an ordinance that it, it's something that, that you are remembering in your in your house throughout your generations. It doesn't go away. If you can remember your holy days every year, you don't forget, just like clockwork, you have your Christ Mass with that fat Satan clause, acting like a pervert with babies and men sitting on his lap, trying to fly through the air with his fat self, with reindeer that can't fly, with a, with a cart loaded with gifts that would, let, that would weigh the thing down. But every December 25th, which, a day in which he was not born, you bring him out of the closet and then you bring the Easter bunny that don't lay eggs every, every April. But you cannot remember what he has told us to do concerning re remembering the feast. Remember the feast. Well, remember one, the Passover. Remember the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Remember the day of Pentecost. Remember the Feast of Trumpets. Remember the Day of Atonement. Remember the Feast of Tabernacles. And there will be a great day. What he was saying is an ordinance that you remember. Just like if you have a a a law on the on the on the wall, you read the law, you you're obeying the law, but that that doesn't mean you, you are, you're killing anything. So with that in mind, I taught you about the Passover. What that, what do we say about the about the Passover? I'm not going to go through, through that again. What 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 was the Passover? That's when when uh, they came out of Egypt and the blood was on the doorpost, and God came through. Not no death angel. That's that that's another lie. He said nothing by the name. The Lord said, "I will come through," which He did. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I will pass over you. And the word is pass over, pass over. And we still remember the Passover, which we did last week. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, blessed it. Then he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And in like manner, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he, and he, he blessed the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant. And this, in my blood, in other words, his blood, and as oft as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. We celebrate the Passover, the blood, the blood represents the Passover and we remember that through the communion meal that's the last thing Jesus did celebrated the Passover he died on the Passover the Passover started at 6 o'clock that evening on the 14th of April or Nisan or Abib and he went through everything he went through uh, at, at 12 o'clock, still on the Passover, which is the sixth hour. They put him on the cross. It became dark all over the land. God would not allow mankind to see what the, what, what the prince of darkness was doing. And uh, when, when he was being wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And the stripes, the flesh that was coming off him, that we were healed of our sins, he did not allow us to see it because it was dark throughout all the land. The kingdom of darkness was there for, from the sixth to the ninth hour because he, he became a curse for us for three hours. 
And then after those three hours, from the sixth to the ninth hour, the Lamb of God that was on the altar, the altar was the altar of sacrifice. He was the Lamb that was slain on what day? On the Passover. The Passover Lamb was slain on the Passover. The Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world was slain on the Passover. He was our Passover Lamb. From the sixth to the ninth hour, from twelve to three, still on Wednesday evening, not Friday. And I'm going to show you how dumb our calendar is. Look, look back, look back, look back, look back to, to, uh, to uh, <laughs> Passover. Passover in April last month. Passover and this fake Good Friday, the, because there is no Good Friday, is on the same day. Mankind does not realize you can't be alive given the communion meal and in the grave at the same time. You've got Passover and you've got Good Friday, which is a lie, on the same day. On the same day. He did not die on Friday. There's no way. Friday at 6 o'clock actually became the Sabbath. He got up, according to Mark, toward the end of the Sabbath, the seventh day. If he died on Friday, he was not in the grave a good 24 hours. And no, he did not get up on no Sunday morning. These, these, and I wish these preachers would get that, get that, that, that stuff out of the throat. <laughs> Won't they spit that stuff out? That's, that's just a game. He did not get up early Sunday morning. He got up toward the end of the Sabbath, which is our Friday. It's actually at 6 o'clock. It's actually Saturday. The Sabbath begins at 6 o'clock on our Friday and ends at 6 o'clock on Saturday. And right now, it is not Sunday. This is Monday. As of 6 o'clock, this is Monday. Evening and morning is the first day. If you don't believe it, go back to Genesis. God did not start creating in the daytime. It was night. In the beginning, God created the heavens and heaven and the earth, and the earth was without shape and void, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water, and darkness, darkness, was upon the face of the deep. The earth was dark. This was a recreation. Because when he, when he created, everything, it, 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 there was no darkness. But to recreate, he started where Satan messed up the atmosphere. So he started in the evening. Evening and morning was the first day. Evening and morning was the second day. All through the sixth day, evening and morning. And on the seventh day, on the seventh day, it was the Shabbat. It was the Sabbath. He rested the seventh day. What is the seventh day? Constantine says Saturday, but the seventh day is the seventh day. Let's call it Saturday, which is the Sabbath. As of 6 o'clock Friday, when I come on to teach you, I am remembering the Sabbath day and keeping it holy. The Sabbath came to an end. When did it come to an end? Six o'clock yesterday. At six o'clock yesterday, the day of the sun that Constantine calls it, but the, but, but the, the first day of the week began. As of six o'clock today, the first day of the week is gone. We, you are now in the second day of the week. Believe it or not, this is Monday. According to the Bible, not according to Constantine. Now with that in mind, as we go to Leviticus 23, I taught you about the Passover. 
and, and how it applies to right now. In the Passover, he passes over our sins. He passes over our, our sins. We become new creatures. We, uh, we're, we, we are coming out from among the folk and being ye, ye separate. We have accepted Christ's broken body and shed blood. That's the Passover. That's the ordinance. The Passover, that's the ordinance. We are forgiven and we are reconciled to God. When you, when you reconcile, you, you, you know how, I don't know, in my heyday, I don't know how many of the girls that I didn't mean no good, but they, they reconciled. They, you know, we, yeah, I lied. And then we reconciled. Here we go. Here we go. In other words, they came together. We were far from God, but he reconciled us. That's what you and I are supposed to be right now, ministers of reconciliation, reconciling folk to Christ. We are ministers of reconciliation, reconciling folk to Christ. And when we're through as ambassadors, he takes us out of here. Now, that is what the Passover is. Our acceptance, that's the, that's the ordinance. Our acceptance of Christ's broken body and shed blood and our forgiveness and reconciliation with God. We ain't killed nothing, have we? But we celebrate the Passover. We remember the Passover. And and you, the thing about it, you don't have to wait till, till, till April the 14th anymore. He says, oft as you do it, do this in remembrance of me. I, I might do that after, after I get off this, this screen. That's often. I might do it in the morning. But he did it in the evening. The sacrifice was in the evening. At the beginning of the day. And then I taught you about unleavened bread. I, and I showed you the difference between leaven and unleavened. The unleavened was a flat piece of bread because there was no yeast in it to make it rise. And yeast represents sin. When sin gets in a person, it causes, it causes infection. It causes sin to rise in that individual. And it looks like leaven, leaven will cause it to rise. They, so, so unleavened bread without the yeast shows us, tells us to come out of sin like they came out of Egypt, come out of that place, come from where you are and grow in grace and in knowledge. The average church, and I'm going to say it, you've grown in grace because it belongs to God, but you sit around and don't read. There's no knowledge. You've, you've, got, to, you've got to have knowledge. You don't stay in kindergarten all your life. Come on now, you grow in grace and knowledge. We need to understand that Robert Brown can't feed you all the time. You need this. You need this to grow. This is food. This is not ice cream. This is not sweets. It's, it's sweet. It's sweet when you taste it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. But but when you sit down at the table, you're not just going to taste that food. You're going to eat it to grow. So the body will grow to nurture to nurture this body. And you need to nurture yourself spiritually. That's what the unleavened, the feast of unleavened bread is all about. But we, we, we need to understand that these holy days have not gone away. They're still holy. That's why Jesus, Jesus said, Be ye holy as I am holy. And no, that is not a denomination. That's a way of life. Holiness is sanctification. It's set apart. When I take this from this side and put it on that side, it, I have separated it. I have moved it from the position that it was in with Satan to 
have and have separated to God's side. That's all it is. That's what salvation is. Salvation is sanctification. It's called instantaneous, instantaneous sanctification. And then as you grow in grace and knowledge, that's called progressive sanctification. You die daily. You lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets you. We haven't arrived yet, but, but yes, we are perfect in the sense that we have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. We're standing in him, and the only thing that God sees when he looks at us is Jesus Christ. He does not see you, just like you can't see my face right now. The only thing he sees is his son, and the fact that his son is in you, and you're in him. And you have become the temple of the, Holy, of the Holy Ghost the moment you were saved. That's called progressive. And you progress to the, to the point where you're going from glory to glory to glory when you come out of this flesh. And, and God gives you a glorified body. When we are put in the casket or cremated or whatever, this is the last time you will see this body because it, 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 it hides who we are spirit you cannot serve god in your flesh they that worship him must worship him what in spirit and in truth it's the spirit inside of you that worship not this flesh folk are fleshy oh when that piano starts going they start going that that's that's why i i have stopped musicians more than once i said uh-uh i got this i got this Folk are going to listen to the music and, 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 and miss the word. It's a game that Satan plays. I'm, and I'm not taking away from y'all's gifts. If, pastors, if you want that, that's you. But that's not me. You, you're supposed to be ministering before I come because that music, according to 1 Chronicles 25, you're prophesying to the Lord. So you, so, and and, and uh, it was Elijah called for, called for a musician before he preached, not during the preaching. No, I know I'd have made somebody mad, but but uh, ask me if I care. No, I do not. We need to recognize that the gospel needs nothing but the gospel. Now, today we're going to talk about Pentecost. Pentecost. We, <laughs> that is not a denomination. That too is a festival. That is a that was a festival. That was a purpose. In the in First Peter, I mean, I'm sorry, Second Peter one and four. Don't don't turn there. It says that we have been partakers of the divine nature. That's what happened to the disciples in the upper room before the 50th day. They had the Holy Spirit in them before the Holy Spirit came upon the people. How do I know that? Because in the evening, on the first day of the week, on, on sun, Sunday evening, he appeared behind closed doors because those disciples, they were wimpy and scared of, of the Jews. So if you think they were scared then, when they looked up, and saw somebody walk through the door without the door opening. Jesus had said, fear not. No, fear not. Uh, I, if they were wearing the pins, they used them. Fear not. Somebody come walking through the door. I don't care if it was Jesus. Wait, what, what, what? Fear not. It's me. It's me. He had told them, and I told you, read John the 14th chapter and get it right. Get it right. Let not your heart be troubled. He, was talk he wasn't talking to you. And, he and that was not a funeral message. It had nothing to do with dying. It had to do with living. About the comfort. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In me. That's not the word. In me. In my Father's house. Which is the kingdom of God. In my Father's house are many mansions. The, the church is the body of Christ that has many members. He, he, was, he was talking about the in my father's kingdom are many, are many members. In my father's house are many mansions. 
If it were not so, I would have told you. I go away three days to prepare a place for you. What place? The kingdom. The same thing that he and John the Baptist preached. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for the kingdom. He was going to prepare the kingdom because he was getting ready to go away. But, but, but get this point. He told the disciples, I will come again to you. I'll come again to you and receive you unto myself. He just told, told the eleven because that crook, that, 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 come, come on, that, that, that crook had gone after, after the communion meal. I go away to prepare a place for you. What place? The kingdom. And I will, the operative word is receive you. Operative word, receive. Write down receive. I will receive you unto myself. I will receive you inside of me. I will receive you. I will be in you. You will be in me. We'll all be in the fire. I will receive you unto myself. And when he appeared behind closed doors, the first word out of his mouth, after fear of night, he said, he breathed on them. And what came out of his mouth? Receive ye the Holy Ghost. They could not enter the kingdom without the Holy Ghost. They had the Holy Spirit before the day of Pentecost. As a matter of fact, 10 days on the, on the 40th day of the feast, there were, there, was, there, were 40, there were 49 days or 7 weeks. He left after 40 days. But before he left, he left him in them. That where I am, you may be also in the kingdom. Now, with that in mind, we have a divine nature inside of us, and we've got to quit operating in the flesh. That's why I don't I, I don't answer to I answer to Pastor, I answer to Robert, I answer to Bobby. Anything else? Forget it. Forget it. There are no reverence other than other than God Himself. Reverend is His name. But you you mess around and and. and and uh, and don't never mind. Don't I ain't even starting there. I ain't starting there. But no, there are no reverence other than God. So he's saying that God has put His Holy Spirit in us, and God has put His very own nature in us. We've got His divine character, and when we walk with Him and in Him, we are growing spiritually. We're growing in grace and knowledge. That is what enables you and I to overcome sin. Now, coming soon, we talked about the Passover. And we talked about the days of unleavened bread. Now we're going to talk about Pentecost. Penta means 50. The 50th day. It, that is not a denomination. There are no Pentecostals. Even the Jews are not Pentecostals. They celebrate a, the Feast of Penta or Pentecost. So, and in Exodus 34 and 32, it, it calls, this, calls it the Feast of First Fruits. Just write down Exodus 34 and 22. Write it down. Exodus 34 and 22. It's called the Feast of First Fruits. That's what. On the fiftieth day, that's what they did, and 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 that reminds us. Notice I said first fruits, first, not all fruit. First fruits. God is only calling out right now, small, first fruits in the spiritual harvest, because that's all Jesus could do when He was on earth. He came unto His own. And his own received him not. But as many as did the, the first fruit, a small amount, as many as did receive him, to them he gave the power, the dunamis, to become the sons of God. And they could only do that through, through the coming of the Holy Spirit. So, so he's going to bless this small harvest. And, and he's going to empower us with the Spirit. 
so we can overcome and grow spiritually. Go, go to uh, Galatians 1 and 4. I'm, I'm going to show you how powerful that is, the fact that, he is, that he's, he's in us like that. Why did Jesus die? What, why, why did he die? What was his purpose? If somebody was asked you that right now, what would you say? Come on, let's be real. You're supposed to be ready to give an answer to them, to them that, that ask, ask anything about your, about your salvation. What, why did he do that? Galatians 1 and 4 will give you the answer that you can give the people. Are you there? It's right after 1 first, first Corinthians, and we're, we're in there quite a bit. Galatians 1 and 4. It's talking about Christ who gave himself... For what? Number one, for our sins. For what purpose? Why is he? Why did he give himself for our sins? Why did he become sin for us? That he might deliver us from this present. What kind of world? Oh yes, it's evil. This present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. Why did he why what did he do why did he give himself? That he might deliver us from this this world is evil. If you don't believe it, you watch the court system. You watch the movements. You watch how quick folk will go on Facebook and talk about everything but God. Come on, you know I'm telling the truth. I'm waiting for somebody to to, to help me try to to spread this word, but all I all I see is this issue that I don't care. I do not. Pro, not pro, any pro, go pro, pro, pro. I don't care. I'm, I'm about the gospel. God gives you common sense. I ain't, I ain't even got to go there. You know what I'm talking about. Let's talk about the Lord. What so everything is a good, good report. But let me go. Let me go. Now, in commanding the feast of, of, of first fruits to, to Israel, what did God say in 23 and 10? He told them to bring a sheaf, just a small, small, about the size of a fan, of first fruits of the spring grain harvest to the priests. Do you see that? And what does he do? He waves the sheaf. In, in, a, in a ceremony, he's waving it. If, he, if he's waving, you know he's waving it upward, right? He's waving it for what purpose? He's waving it for God to accept it, to, ex, to, to obtain God's blessing, not only on him, not on, on the people, but the spring harvest. And it shows the, the spirituality of the resurrect, resurrected Christ being accepted by the Father as the first, as the first of the first fruits. Christ was the first of the first fruits. Why do we celebrate Penta? Because he was the first of the first fruit. The first human, because he didn't die as God, he died as man, the son of man, because God can't die. He, be, he became sin for us, he became man for us. He is the first man to, to actually be born of God by the resurrection. He was born of God, representing you and I. We had to be born of God, and we could not be born of God had he not risen. And the waving ceremony took place on what we call Sunday, but it was actually the first day of the week. It wasn't on the Sabbath. It was a, it was immediately following the Sabbath. Go to go to go to uh, Leviticus twenty three. Verse eleven. And then I told you the Sabbath is our Saturday. And I don't even like to 
there were no names of the week in, in the Bible, no, no, no names of the months. That's Edward Constantine's evil doing. They were always numbered. The years 1 through 12, the weeks 1 through 7. I, I defy anybody to find a month of the year by name anywhere or, 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 or a month of, month of the year or, or, week, or a day of the week. I want you to show me. It's not there. That's man's doing. And Leviticus 23 and 11, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord, I told you that, to be accepted for who? For you, for the people. Just like God, Jesus died for the people. And on tomorrow after Saturday, okay, I'm sorry, on the morrow after the Sabbath, Sabbath or Shabbat, the priest shall wave it. What you call early Sunday morning. He waved it. Are y'all still with me? I know I'm tearing up your theology. On the first day of the week, the day after the Sabbath, he, that's when that took place. <laughs> the weekly, <laughs> following the weekly Sabbath during the days of the unleavened bread. We've talked about Passover. We've talked about unleavened bread. Now we're talking about Penta. Now if you compare it, Compare 28, just write it down, don't, don't, don't go there. But if you compare Matthew 28 and 9 with John 20 and 17, then write them down. Matthew 28 and 9 and John 20 and 17, you will see that Christ presented himself to the Father after his resurrection the previous evening on the Shabbat. After he got up, he got up toward the end of the Shabbat, toward the end of the Sabbath, toward Saturday, not early Sunday morning. Them preachers, y'all need to stop preachers. Read your Bibles. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I, I ain't scared of none of you. Read the Bibles and quit, and quit playing. Let me prove it. Go, go to 1 Corinthians 15. Don't, don't take Robert Brown's word. Read for yourself. 1 Corinthians 15. We're talking about the first fruit. I said that Christ became the first fruit. Just like in, in Leviticus. Talking about first fruit. What the first first uh, Corinthians 15 and 20 say? What is Christ right now? But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the, underline it, first fruits of them that slept. First fruits. And in verse 23, because, because, no, let's read it all. In, in verse 21, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made Alive. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So he's made alive. Underline verse 23. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they are at Christ as, as, as his coming. What's that talking about? The Lord himself shall descend, he's already gone, shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet, the trumpet, the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, because he's, and then, then those of us that remain shall be, be called up together in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. The, the second fruit is going to meet the first fruit. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. 
you, you see it for yourself. All this happened. That's why we are to remember the holy days. But every man in his own order, in our order, whether we're in the grave or whether we are walking the earth during the rapture, whether, whether it's, we go by death or, or by the rapture, every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. And he's coming. He's coming. Second fruits. He's coming. The first fruits are already, it's, it's, it's a done deal. It's a done deal. Now, <laughs> Romans 8 and 29. Because y'all quote that 28th verse in a heartbeat. And they ain't read the whole chapter. And you know you ain't. Don't, don't even go there. I'm not even going to ask you if you read the whole chapter. Because we say, and the Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, and don't go another further. The important verse, all of them are important, but the next verse is, For whom he did foreknow before you was even born, he also did predestinate to be conformed, what? To be conformed to the image of his son that we might be the what? That we might be the what? Firstborn among many brethren. He's already gone up. Now we're going to follow him. The firstborn. That's why we celebrate the holy day. The firstborn among many brothers. That's the ordinance. The firstborn. Among many brothers. And the, the last uh, scripture I want to give. Go to Colossians the first chapter. And let's start at let's start with verse 13. I'm going to wait because I, 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 my Bible is semi-trained. But, but Colossians is right after, right after Philippians. It's Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 and I'll, and all, all, but learn, 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 learn. Just learn about five, about five a day, about five one day, five the next day. Then stop, and just do the ten, okay. Once you get those down, do five more and do the fifteen. Now are you there? Colossians one. What did he do for us? I told you when he was on the cross. There was darkness. Darkness had power. The Lord gave his permissive will to Satan to cause darkness upon the face of the land. He was the, he, he was the power of darkness. Because in, in God there's no darkness at all. He's light. Verse uh, 13. Who had delivered us from what? The same power that, that he delivered Jesus from. The power of darkness. And what happened at that very moment that you were saved? What happened the very moment you were saved? You were translated. I go away and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. What happened? He received you unto himself the moment and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. I told you John 14 has nothing to do with heaven. He can't go and prepare a place he came from. Pastor, will y'all stop reading that scripture? Yeah, unless you're reading to the folk for, for, for comfort at that funeral. But, but it's not for the dead. Chapters 14 through 17 of the Gospel of John is talking about the comforter. Talking about the Holy Spirit. But that's another story. Study. But he has... You're right now. He didn't say he will, it say he will deliver us. Look... Look at how it's word. Oh, he'll deliver me by and by. Not, he's already delivered us 
from the power of darkness. At the very moment you were saved, the very moment you received him, he translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. That's why we celebrate the whole days. And in the son we have redemption. We've been bought back. Well, what did he pay? His blood. We have redemption through his blood. And what else? What about, what about my sins? Even the forgiveness of sins. People remember what you did, but God's memory, they don't, don't, he doesn't act like that. He don't act like he don't act like these crazy folk. I remember you when. Well, I remember you. I remember you. You you need to remember you when, because my when has gone. My my when is now. Now I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. You can't even see me, like that rest that wrestler. Said, you can't see me. You can't see me. I'm the temple of the Holy Ghost. I'm I'm inside Christ Jesus. He's inside. The, you can't see me. I've been translated. Translated. Now, it doesn't stop there. What happens after you're translated? And we have been, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, <laughs> who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. There, there it is again, firstborn of every creature. And look and go down to verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, which is you, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. If he got up, you got up. If he got up, you got up. Well, he got up, so you will get up. You've already, you are, I've already come out of sin. That's what this, that's what this, why we need to remember the holy days. That's what these holy days are all about. You, you have actually been, probably been celebrating and don't, didn't even know what you were celebrating. Because now, we're talking about Pentecost. The Israelites was to count 50 days beginning with this Sunday, this this first day after the Sabbath, Af after the Feast of Weeks, after the 49 weeks, the 49 weeks be ended on a Sabbath. It ended on a Saturday, a Sabbath. And they were... <laughs> Go, go to mm. Lord help me with this one. They were to count. Go, go to Leviticus uh, 23. These words are getting small on me now. Uh, I think 15 through 17 says, You shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath. After the Sabbath, six o'clock Saturday, which is su our Sunday, you count from yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, which you call Sunday, from the day you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths. I told you, we, you we've gone through 49 days or seven Sabbaths, seven weeks of Sabbath, seven Sabbaths. But after this last, after the Sabbath, after the, after these 49 days, <laughs> you count 50 days. On that 50th day, the day after the seventh Sabbath, after the seventh Sabbath, you shall offer a new grain offering unto the Lord. On that 50th day, you offer a new grain offering unto the Lord. And in Leviticus 23, 15, 17, you shall bring from your habitations. See, this, this stuff, these feasts, they were in your dwellings, your household, in your dwellings. It tells you what to bring. Bring out of your house two, two wave loaves or two tenths of an ephah, 
uh, they shall be a fine flour, and now you have leaven. Bake with leaven. I want, I want, I want a big offering. And they, according to Leviticus 23, 15 to 17, they are the first fruits of the Lord. On Pentecost, the first fruits. Pentecost means 50th. By counting 50 days from that designated Sunday, it will always end up a, on a Sunday seven weeks later. But not on any particular day of the month. <laughs> if I, don't, I haven't seen in, in Scripture what well, Pentecost, only thing you got, you got to do is count. On the day of Pentecost, or first fruits, there were two, two wave offerings. Two wave offerings. Or, 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 or they were off two wave loaves. And in verse 17, what were these loaves? The first fruit of the Lord. And this pictures the Old Testament and the New Testament. Old and new. They're actually, they're actually one, but old and new. Because, let me show you something. Go to First Peter one verse ten and eleven for those of you that are saying that, that that the Holy Ghost didn't come to the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost has always been here. First Peter one Verse ten. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. Verse 9. What do you receive at the end of yourself, at the end of your faith? Once, if you believe in Jesus Christ, that he died, what do you receive? Salvation of your souls. Look at verse 10. Of which salvation... The prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them. The Spirit of Christ which was in them this signified when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory to follow. It was in them already. Focal line. The, the Holy Spirit uh, has always, always been here. The Holy Spirit talked to Moses. There, there were men in Moses' time and, and that, that the Spirit of God dealt with them. And Moses said, I, I wish every man had that spirit. So, the even during Penta and the, and these these those prophets were led by the Spirit of Christ. They had the Holy Spirit, but something else needed to happen because in the first fruits, God is only calling out a small number. Jesus on earth and his disciples had small numbers because Jesus only came for his people. He came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and he told his disciples to do the same thing, not even to go to the way of the Gentiles. So only the first fruits, first fruits heard the story and all of them did not receive. I told you, he came unto his own lost sheep, and his own received him not. 
a fugitive, but as many as did receive him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. First fruits. Only first fruits is only a small number of people, which is also in this age. There's a small number. There's a lot of folks that are saved, but there's more that are not saved. We're the first fruits. We're the early harvest. So, <laughs> what did Christ say? I'm going to read this in Matthew. What? I'm going to show you how small the harvest is. In Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14, he says, Enter by the narrow gate. Wait a minute. Yeah. Came, but so many people go through a narrow, narrow place, narrow gate. But he says, Enter the narrow gate. For why is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. We see that in 2022. For there are many who go in by it. That, oh, that 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 down that, that down the road. It is crowded. It is crowded. It is crowded. Oh, that down was road. It is crowded. I believe it's so. That's a South Carolina song, y'all. Y'all probably don't know, but 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 narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way, which leads to life. And few there be that find it. Few there be that find it. That's Matthew seven, verse thirteen and fourteen. Few. And, and uh, Jesus said in uh, John 6, verse 44, and, and, verse, and verse 65, John, verse 4, 6 chapter, verse 44, and verse 65, No man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them. And I, not the Father, and I will raise him up at the last day. And he said in that 60, 65th verse, Therefore I have said to you that no man can come to me unless it has been granted to him by the Father. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit work together. No man can come to unless they're drawn. You can't be drawn unless you're listening, taking heed. Now, now, mm, the, uh, mm, how do I say this? There are millions who uh, are not following the true God because of false teaching. They, they, they like to go to church to have a good time, but have not been shown the way. <laughs> Mm, the harvest is small. The harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. Now, they waited in the upper room. I don't know how big that house was, but there were, there were, plenty, of, there were plenty of folk. They had come from at least 16 different dialects. Sixteen the nations came to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of first fruits or Pentecost, the fiftieth day. Jesus had been gone ten days. They say he, he was here forty days. So he celebrated all but nine days of the Feast of Weeks. After he changed his field of supervision, after ten days, the Bible declares in Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost, when the day of the feast had fully come, when they were with one accord in one place, Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. 
there was no wind. It says, as of. But they heard it. As of a mighty rushing wind. The same spirit that brewed, that, that, that was brooding over the water in Genesis 1. The same spirit that breathed on the disciples in the upper room. Now that sound from heaven came, he had changed his field of supervision, and that sound from heaven came as of a rushing and mighty wind. And it filled the whole house. The wind filled the whole house. The sound filled the whole house in which they were sitting. They were waiting. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And the sound, that's what I said, filled the whole, whole house in which they were sitting. And when that day came, what happened? Go, go, go with me to Acts 2. I should have told you to do that before, before I, before I started, started talking, but I, I get excited about this because they were, they were waiting. And there appeared, there appeared unto them, clubbing, split, because the nations were split. They were all over. Cloven tongues. As of fire. It wasn't fire. But it looked like fire. Come on y'all. Come on. That's where you mess up. You're talking about. Saved. Sanctified. Holy Ghost filled. And fire baptized. No. This is not that. There's no fire. There's no fire. Come on. And it's it's set upon each of them. In the same manner when Jesus was being baptized, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost came together, but the Holy Ghost came in the form of a dove that set upon. And now what what is this what what's going on with these clubbing tongues? Huh? Is set upon each one of them. Fire represents purification. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute. I thought you said these disciples in the upper room, they received the Holy Ghost. They did. But we're not always filled with the Holy Ghost. We're filled for service. We're filled to do something. Your tank ain't full all the time. Not, not according to the word. Because the Bible says be filled. That, that, that word is be, be constantly filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody unto the heart unto the Lord. You're not filled until it's time, until it's time for, God, for, for you to do something for the Lord. You have the Holy Ghost, but you're not filled all the time. At least Robert Brown is. There are times when my tank is, feels like it's empty. But it, what happened when they were filled with the Holy Ghost? And get this right. They began to speak with known tongues. With other tongues. As the Spirit of God gave them others. They began to speak... There were at least 16 different dialects that understood everything. They were, they were known tongues. Paul said, I speak more than you are. And, and he did. To the Greeks, he spoke Greek. To, to, the, to the Hebrews, he spoke, he spoke Hebrew. But I need a Peter to interpret what I just said. In a language they could all understand. He spoke in Aramaic, a tongue all the Jews understood because that they spoke with, not in tongues, and that, that's what you hear preachers saying, but with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
as the spirit did it, it wouldn't make up but, but that shit lock it. If your shit lock it, lock it, not not my shit lock it, lock it, your shit lock it, lock it, blah, 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 Babylon, Babylon. It was known language, easily understood. Because look at verse 5. There were dwelling at Jerusalem because of feasts, devout Jews out of what? Every nation under heaven. Every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Underline this, you Bible scholars, because that every man heard them speak in his own language, which was easily understood. There goes your doctrine. If you don't have, if, if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Ghost. Now Jesus said, by this, men should know that you are my disciples, that you have love one for another. And it's so important that the first fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Is love, then joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Love. It was, import it was important at this time for God to speak to all nations through the disciples, through a, a tongue that they each could understand. At this time, they, when Jesus, b before the disciples, were in this upper room, Jesus commissioned them only after the Holy Spirit. And no, Mary did, Mary did not preach. Mary, just, Mary, Mary came with the message to meet Jesus and meet him in Galilee. If she had said to meet, meet him at, at, at a barn, that wouldn't have made him a cow. And if they said meet me at a, at a garage, that wouldn't have made him a cannon. It was just a simple message. There could be no preaching without the Holy Spirit. And until Jesus said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, then and only then did he say, Now, since you got the Holy Ghost, now go into all, A-L-L, -L, not just the lost sheep, into all the world, preach the gospel to every nation, and lo, I'm with you all way. Well, and he also told Peter what after you converted strengthen the brethren this is the first sermon of strength Peter weak Peter denied him three times Peter cut off the ear Peter cussing God will use the strange things of the world to confound the wicked. He used the the person that you would you would you would think he would use. But, but no, Peter. The statement that Peter made. Peter's not the rock, but the statement he made when Jesus asked, "Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am?" and and nobody answered right, but Peter. He said, "Thou art Christ, the Son of the Messiah, the Son of the Living God." And Jesus, said, upon this statement, upon this rock. What you just said up on that rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Peter began, began the building of the church which had not been established yet through this sermon. And if, if it wasn't for recognizing the feast of Pentecost, it would never have happened. We are, we should, we, we should still recognize it. That'd be a pretty good time for you to take your vacation. Seven days. A seven day vacation. I'll talk about that later, but we need to understand something. God has called us to be a peculiar people. He has called us to be different. He has called us to be set aside. There are things that we need to do individual. And collectively, these things that people are calling convocation are not convocations, they're just meetings. Things should be taught for these seven days. 
when you come together for that holy convocation. The day of Pentecost was a day of celebrating the gathering of the first and smaller of the two annual harvests. It was served 50 days from a fixed point from the, from the previous feast. I'm talking about unleavened bread. As I, as I close, on April the 14th was the Passover. On April the 15th through the 21st was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. 50 days later, around June the 8th or June the 11th, was the day of Pentecost. It's the sixth and seventh day <laughs> of June, which is, what's that word, seven, seven? We need to not only remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, we need to remember the holy days. Do you remember Passover? You remember the Feast of Unleavened Bread? Cast aside every way? You remember Penta, the, the gathering where folk gather together? Well, next week we're going to talk about the Feast of Trumpets. You, I, I think on the calendar it's called, what, Rosh, Rosh Hashanah or something like that. It's a, it's a day of rejoicing. Marked by what? The blowing of trumpets. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come thanking you for this time. I pray, God, that you're pleased with the study because I know that it's very seldom, if ever, taught because we're busy with the four Gospels and never take time to deal with the kingdom issues in, in the Gospel. But Lord, I pray that these people that you have put in front of me would study this word and see the riches, the promises you have for them through this word. And Father, as we leave, let us, before we go to sleep tonight, honor you by reading a portion of your word daily. As David said, your word we hide in our hearts that we might not sin. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. If there's one today that has not received Jesus Christ and the free pardon of your sins, I've shown you the simplicity, simplicity of what you think is a complex God. The simplicity of the gospel is just belief. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Got up on the third day. If you believe it, because by grace are you saved through faith. It has nothing to do with you. The, the Spirit of God is the gift of Him to you. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. You will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He loves you enough. It's not his will that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And because of his long suffering, you're still alive. He, don't, he, he does not want you to be lost. Not one, not one person under the sound of my voice as he won't lost. Will you give your life to him? Today is your day. Today is your day. He loves you. And I love you. I've spent a lot of time trying to win folk to Christ, and I'm hoping you're doing the same thing. And before I leave, I want to wish all you mothers and you a very happy Mother's Day. And, and you don't have to have birthed a child to be a mother. I've seen so many good Good, good people that with that motherly instinct and God sees you too. 
I wish you a happy Mother's Day, and I will see you Friday, Book of Genesis. Pray for this, pray for this preacher.